The College of William and Mary is having its first in-person Juneteenth event today. It's at the newly completed site Hearth Memorial to the Enslaved, which is dedicated to people who were enslaved by the university. The event goes from 3 until 7 p.m. You know, not all slaves were freed after the 1863 signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Two years after that signing, Union armies began marching through the southern states, freeing thousands of slaves every day. And the news took months to reach Texas. Janet Roach tells us how it happened. On June 19th, Major General Gordon Granger and 2,000 Union troops rode into Galveston, Texas and told slaves of their freedom. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. General Orders No. 3, Headquarters, District of Texas, Galveston, June 19, 1865. Granger's word spread through Texas all at once. Slaves found out the war was over and they were free. Their joyous, spontaneous celebration gave birth to Juneteenth. Many slaves were met with violence or death when they tried to leave, yet the promise of freedom extinguished fear and fueled generations of indestructible people. Former slaves gathered on Juneteenth the next year and the year after that, and over the decades, black communities observed the holiday with festive family gatherings, colorful parades, and barbecues. Texas became the first state to make Juneteenth an official holiday in 1980, and since then, all but three states recognized Juneteenth as a holiday.